Hello, welcome back to the Techimaki channel. Today we're going to continue on the orders service and we are going to do some refactorings. But before we go, don't forget to click here to subscribe and also click on the notifications in order to receive notifications whenever I publish new videos. All right, so now let's go back to the orders. What if we could do this? Everything here, deserialization, getting the exact same URL with almost no code. What if we could do this by only defining an interface? Sounds nice, right? So we are going to be able to do this using a library called refit. The refit library was created to allow us to, by convention, define interfaces and these interfaces are going to be in runtime. It's going to create the class for you and this class is going to deserialize the object and give to you the response already in a model. So let's see how it works. Okay, so the first thing that we need here is to install this refit library. So let's do it. Let's click here. Let's go to the manage NuGet packages. Let's go to the refit and let's install this refit library. Uh, by the way, I'm using uh, .NET Core 3.1. I should have said that before. Probably I said that in one of the videos, uh, but if I haven't, I'm telling right now. So now let's go back here. And instead of using this, let's go straight ahead to the startup.cs. And here in the startup.cs, we're going to use something that is already available, even without refit. You can put dot here and add type it client. It actually means that you want a certain concrete implementation to be your HTTP client. So instead of having the HTTP client being injected on top of your class, why not making your class already a structure that has the HTTP client inside of it? So that's a little bit different. If, if we go back here, just to explain a little bit more, we go to the product service proxy and we remember that here in the constructor, we have the injection of the HTTP client that we defined it on the factory that we had in the startup.cs. Now we're going to change things a little bit. We're not going to have this HTTP client here anymore. And we are going to implement a class that wraps this HTTP client inside of it. Okay, That's pretty much the idea. So let's go back to the startup.cs. And here I'm going to define this type and client. What I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this uh, definition of HTTP client, this basic definition of HTTP client. And I'm also going to define here a name for our HTTP client uh, product. Okay, so in the add type it client, we are going to define here that this type it client is going to be our I product service proxy. Okay, so here we are going to define our type it client. So we need to put the client, we need to put the provider as the second thing, and then here we're going to define the implementation of our factory that is going to at the end return a new product service proxy so let's specify the HTTP client here so let's just copy this code from here put this information over here and our client is going to receive the base address as console registry service get service let's call it service providers and here we don't need the factory anymore because we are defining this type it client inside of the chain of calls of the add HTTP client all right, so, so far so good, but we haven't actually changed anything that much. But here comes the thing. When we are returning this product service proxy, why not using the refit to create this product service proxy for us without us having to actually implement anything? We don't need to implement the product service proxy at all. So let's do it. Let's go here and uh, comment this line of code. And here, that's the fact. Return refit dot rest service for and we need to define what is the interface that contains the convention as i said i product rest service so generate the interface then we go inside this interface and here we're going to define this api what is the name of the api the api is named get so let's just define public product to get right and the name of this uh, method is get Cool. And we receive as a parameter the product ID. Product ID. Cool. Let's think about what else are we missing here. Of course, that we need to import this guy. What we also need to specify is uh, decorate this method here with some information that refit needs in order to build the URL properly. Get. So we define this refit 
get implementation. So what is this tender for the get? It's product slash product ID. Oh, we need to put the question mark product ID. And here we put product ID. So here we are defining the template for the refit. So now refit knows how to structure the URL that it's going to use in order to dynamically generate the HTTP client class that is going to call our service. Okay. So then after defining this very simple interface, we come back to our startup.cs. And here in the startup.cs, let's specify here the client. I should actually define to return as a typed client the I product rest service. So let's just do it. I'm also going to remove here because it's clear here that I'm returning this I products rest service. All right, so now zero code. Let's find the product service proxy. And then here in the service proxy, we don't even need this code anymore, okay? So we can go here and even comment that and see if we got any compilation error. Product rest service. So I'm going to call here I product rest service. I'm going to also call here I product rest service. And let's just rename the variable, right? So let's do uh, renaming and let's rename this as product rest service so product rest service and then i'm going to apply this over here for some reason we haven't uh, actually set this as public so we need to specify this as a public interface and what is interesting here is that it's a get async so let's fix it let's just go there in our interface and then establish the get async and when we get something async let's just specify a task here right so we need to return this as a task, and then it's going to be solved uh, whenever we get the result of that task. Let's now hit play and run our code. Let's add a certain order. So I'm going to remove this ordered ID. I'm going to remove this ordered item ID. Let me define 20 of this. Let's define a real product ID. Let's just specify it over here in the product ID. So let's click in execute. And at some point it's going to hit this error update API. So let's just navigate, step over, let's go to this product REST service. At least let's see if it's not new, right? That was actually initially my expectation. I was saying, oh, I don't believe in this. This is going to generate like a new instance, but no, it actually generated a real instance. And if you can read here, it's like tmaki.orders.auto-generated product rest service. So it, it has generated dynamically this code that contains the implementation of this HTTP client. And it has all the settings and everything that we define it on top of this implementation. So now let's continue here and let's get the result of that. So let's just step over and then we have the price. We could even go there, go back to the orders and completely remove the service proxy implementation. And here in the order controller, I can now completely remove this code. So no lines of code. Okay, so now that we have created all of this and we are interacting in a much easier way with uh, external services, what if we could move the poly, we could move everything related to accessing external services to a third party? I'm talking about an API gateway. So in the next video, we're going to talk about API gateway. I hope to see you there on the next video. See you!